Well, hello again, everybody. Today's date is Monday, February 18, 2019. Hey, I have a conversation I'd like to have with you guys today, and it's going to be interesting for both Filipinos and Americans and all Western people to hear this. <clears throat> and I'm sure some Filipinos are going to be very surprised as well, but they're going to know that I'm right in what I'm talking about. Today I met an extremely nice Filipina. Uh, she's from Cebu, she's from the city, uh, very educated, perfect English. I really liked her. We had a great conversation and when I told her what I've been doing here and she had already seen some of the photographs I've posted in some of the videos about my going up into the jungles and feeding the children, she said to me, she said, why do you call it the jungle? Why do you say you're going to the jungle? And I said, well, it's because it is the jungle. And she says, yeah, but a jungle won't have any running water in the houses. It won't have any bathrooms. And I said, well, I said, like I said, I go to the jungle. There's no running water in any house that I've ever seen there. There uh, are no bathrooms. As a matter of fact, I just built a bathroom in, uh, in a very nice lot on a very nice little hut. Uh, spent several thousand pesos uh, to dig a new hole, to put a modern toilet in, <clears throat> but you have to flush it with the bucket. And then I literally built a room for it uh, so that the family can be secure and safe in there. And they're able to literally bathe if they want to take buckets of water and then heat the water. Then they can take a warm uh, bath inside of this large uh, room that I, that I constructed all out of concrete. <clears throat> so in order to get water into the homes in the jungle, you need to take buckets. And the government will run a, a water line or a hose from the top of the mountain down to the lower level of the jungle and there'll be a common place there where the water will come out of a spigot. It just continuously runs. And it's basically, if you want to call it fresh mountain spring water, uh, that's basically what it is. <clears throat> and in the particular town that I go to, um, they have, if I'm not mistaken, about three water stations where the guys can go fill up their buckets and it doesn't cost anything. You fill up your bucket, then you have to carry them back to your house. And if any of you have seen uh, movies, you know, uh, down in South America, Central America, in the jungles down there, in the Amazon, <clears throat> and, and over here uh, in Southeast Asia, you'll see guys carry a stick over their shoulder and on each end of that stick there's a little slat and you put a bucket on each end and then you <clears throat> carry that water uh, up to the house and you can carry two, they're about uh, two and a half, three gallon jugs of um, water each time. So you can carry about five gallons a time up to the house. And then you have to take those buckets and dump them into like a large garbage can of water in your kitchen so that mom can, you know, scoop up uh, dishwater and they'll fill up a little uh, tub inside the, the kitchen and that's how they'll wash their dishes and they'll rinse their dishes. Uh, <clears throat> it's the same for the CR, or, or as, as the Western people call it the bathroom. Here they call it the CR, the comfort room. And what you have to do is keep several pails of water. I like to keep about three five gallon uh, buckets of water in the CR at all times. And basically after you use a toilet or if you just use a hole in the ground, uh, you take the bucket and you pour it to flush the water by gravity and volume of water. <clears throat> and then you also, uh, one thing they do here, we really, you don't use toilet paper here. People literally wash themselves. You take like a little, oh, a little, uh, it's, a, it's like a baby bucket. It, it, it's a scoop. And it holds maybe, you know, a couple glasses of water and you take that water and you pour it down on yourself and you wash yourself and then you take and you dry yourself off with a towel. And I gotta be honest with you, it's very clean, very clean. Um, you know, I, not to get gross or anything, but toy, toilet paper sucks. I mean, uh, it doesn't really clean you well. And so that's the jungle way of doing things. And people there are very, very clean. Every day they take a bath, uh, they go down and they fill uh, a five gallon pail of water and they all take care of each other and everybody kind of leaves a bucket full for the next person to come. <clears throat> and then you take that bucket and you put a scoop in there and you pour it over the top of your head and you get yourself wet. I take a, a really good uh, bath 
shower, whatever you want to call it. And I only use about four gallons of water total, and I'm, I'm spotlessly clean. It feels great. You know, as Westerners, we turn on the shower and we leave it run while we shampoo our hair and we soap ourselves up. The water is running and it's running and it's running. And you're going to go through at least 10 gallons of water. <clears throat> so here we don't use that much water. But, but the point of this video is there are many Filipinos that have never been to a jungle. There are many Filipinos that don't even know what the jungle is, and I found that out today. And there are many Western people, missionary people, and we actually do know the jungles. And we know the cities. So many foreigners come here, we know more about the country as far as its landscape is concerned. And having to deal with these other um, <clears throat> difficult situations here, such as going to the jungle, dealing with the heat, dealing with all the, the bugs that are up there, uh, having to try to sleep when it's you know 110 degrees and 100% humidity, um, those are difficult things. And there's many you know wealthier Filipinos that live very comfortably and have never been to the jungle before. And so I was able to talk to this woman this afternoon and tell her what the jungle is like, and she was pretty surprised. She's like, "Wow, you know, they never thought of that." Uh, so there are two different sides to this country, and I'll be honest with you, you know, it would really behoove you if you're coming from a Western society to find out as much about the Philippines as possible. The, the people in the, in the jungles or up in the provinces are extremely wonderfully kind people, but it's not a place you want to go to and mess around. I'm going to tell you that. If you stroll into the jungle by yourself, especially if it's in the mountains, it's not a good idea. Now, if you have a Filipina whose family is there, well, then you can survive that as long as you're respectful to the people. And I'm going to tell every Western guy this. When you go to the province, when you go to the jungle, and, and the jungle is one step deeper than a province. A province is kind of living in the country. Jungle is up in the mountain and in the jungle, man. Um, be respectful, dude. Uh, say hello to everybody. Uh, have eye contact with people. Be a good person when you come here and you won't have any problems at all. But there are different uh, cultures here. There are people with different life experiences here. And if you want to jump in and be adventurous and, and find out about everything in the Philippines, it's going to take you time, it's going to take patience, and it's going to take kindness. You have to really be open-minded and don't judge everybody. Their life in their world is way different than the Western world. And you have to remember, we're in their home. So conduct yourself properly and then come here and enjoy everything that, it, that the Philippines has to offer. So I wanted to kind of just touch base on the differences here in the Philippines that even some Filipinos don't realize. And I'm really proud of the fact that I've taken the time and I've learned about the different cultures, the city life. I live in the city and soon I'm going to be moving out of this city to another city. And I'll be doing that in about six more weeks. So my time here has been very well spent. I've learned a lot. I think Rochelle and her family have been fantastic. I, I love them very much. <clears throat> but it's time, you know, there's a season for everything. And the season for, for me uh, has changed. And I, I need to go elsewhere and study some more. I like to go to places and study. I don't like to go to a place and just take from the place. I like to leave something behind for the people here. And I believe that's what I've done. So again, this is Dave in the Philippine Islands saying, See ya, don't wanna be ya, bye.